You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> A Scarecrow by William Harmar Narrated by Otis Gyre I can hear the whistling again. It's the final weeknight, and again he has come, whistling that little ditty, repeating it again and again, enough to drive the sanest of men crazy. Through the window I can see the light through the cornfield, I can hear the rustling of plants, the maddening whistling. It's all culminating in a feeling of hopeless dread, like being faced with a gun while you're up against a wall. I know he wants to find me, but I don't know what he wants with me. I don't want to know what he wants. All I want is for this to be over with. The lamplight is becoming brighter. The whistling becoming louder, and the dread in my stomach is getting worse and worse every second. Only my need to keep quiet is preventing me from either screaming in fear or throwing up from the sickening tension. For a while, it feels like time is torturing me, making things seem slower than they are to keep my anxiety levels sky high. But it feels all too soon when he finally shows his face through the green fog like plants. All I can see is his smile, a stitched, malicious little smile, mouth sewn shut, as if to keep his hatred from spewing forth. The dim lamp sways back and forth as he comes through the corn, effortlessly, almost gliding through like a ghost. It's nauseating seeing his dimly lit figure wander towards my house. And it's even worse trying to figure out what he wants from me. Does he want me dead? Does he want me to go mad? I can't tell. But what's for certain is that whatever he wants is not pleasant. My gut tells me to make a run for it, but I know for a fact he's faster. The times I've tried to escape have usually been the worst, or at least the most terrifying. I once felt his cold, clammy hand on my shoulder. That's how close he got. Now he's at the door. I can hear it slowly creaking open. God knows how he can open a locked door, but at this point I'm too frightened to care. I hide in my cupboard, sweat dripping off me like I'm a water balloon that's just been punctured. The whistling is now right underneath me, and the constant creaking of floorboards is giving me shivers every time I hear it. He's coming up the stairs, and a dim light slowly creeps through the crack in the cupboard, growing brighter and brighter. The whistling is getting louder and louder. Every synapse in my body is getting so tense it hurts. And then the light stops getting brighter. And the whistling sounds like it's right beside my ear. And then I let out a breath. The whistling stops. No, oh God, no. He knows where I am. He'll find me and it'll be over. I can't hear his breathing, just footsteps getting closer and closer. A few seconds go by. No noise. No whistling. Just infinitely tense silence. And then the whistling begins again. He walks away, leaving me in my scared stupor. The door closes, the light fades, and I'm left scared and alone. So, here I am, dreading the next week, and dreading that next time, I won't be so lucky. I hope you enjoyed this evening's little tale. Until next time, bundle up, stay warm. Sleep tight. <laughs> <laughs>